We got a question here about one of the most mysterious figures in the scriptures. Let's listen into this call. Hi, Mike and Adriel. Uh, my name is Joshua Lang. Um, I'm from uh, Midland, Michigan. Um, and I have a question about Melchizedek. Um, I've been reading in Genesis um, and in Hebrews, um, and I've given it some careful study with my study Bible. Um, and I was wondering if you could elaborate on the significance of Melchizedek um, and I guess his relation to Jesus. Uh, thank you very much. Hey, thanks, Joshua. You know, I was just asked this question by someone in our church who wanted to know, was Melchizedek a pre-incarnate Christ? So we had a great discussion. You know, Melchizedek is, is you know, I mean, I think this is why you're asking the question. He's a really mysterious figure in the Old Testament. He's only mentioned twice in Genesis 14 and then also in Psalm 110. If you look at Genesis 14, he appears to Abraham after a great battle. Abraham meets up with the king of Sodom in a place called the Valley of Shaveh. And then out of nowhere, this man named Melchizedek shows up and he's called the king of Salem. Now, Salem is probably short for Jerusalem. You sometimes get that in the Psalms, for example, Psalm 76, verse 2. And he's described as a priest of the Most High God. Now, this is significant because he's both a king and a priest. And usually, at least in the Old Testament, you weren't both. You you think about what happened to Saul, for example, when he tried to offer sacrifice, do the duties of a priest as a king. He got in big trouble. And so you have a priest king of Salem who shows up out of nowhere and blesses Abraham. And then get this, he brings out bread and wine in Genesis 14, and Abraham gives him a tithe of all the spoils from the battle that he had just come out of. Now, centuries later, and I I think this is so fascinating because you, you have Melchizedek just dropped in there, Genesis 14, then you don't hear anything else about him. And then centuries later, another king in Jerusalem writes these words. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. That's Psalm 110, verse 1. And then down in verse 4, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now try to follow me here. You have this mysterious priest king in Genesis who offers bread and wine. And then way later in the story, you have King David who has a vision of another king who is coming, one that he calls Lord, And he says that God has sworn to him that he is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And all of this is taken up, as you mentioned, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, where the author of the Hebrews tells tells us that Melchizedek is a picture of Jesus. He is without father or mother or genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but resembling the Son of God, he continues a priest forever. And I think right right there, that word resembling is really important. What the author is saying is that the Genesis story depicts Melchizedek as this mysterious guy we don't know anything about. There's no genealogy. We don't know who his mom and dad were. But that doesn't mean the guy in Genesis didn't have parents. He's just depicted in this way so that he can serve as a type of the priest king who was to come, Jesus. And Jesus is our eternal high priest king who gave himself once for all for our sins, makes intercession for us from heaven right now. He's praying for you. And then get this, like Melchizedek, he offers us bread and wine every time we take communion. Really a a wonderful picture. And so I think the best way to see Melchizedek is not as a sort of pre-incarnate Jesus, but as this mysterious figure that's presented to us in in the text of Scripture as this priest king who is a type of Christ, the king who was to come, the king that we worship. Mike, you got anything else to add to that? Well, you know, all of the, uh, you know, all of the great patriarchs are types pointing forward to Christ. Yeah, uh, David is a type, his greater son, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. So they're all pointing forward, uh, and if they're not a type, they're in some way uh, progenitors of and pointing forward to, often by their failures, mm-hmm. pointing forward to the kind of prophet, priest, and king that we need. And you don't get a clearer type of Christ, the prophet, yeah. priest, and king than Melchizedek. It's such an important point. We've, we're middle of the way through Second Samuel in our family devotions. And when our kids, you know, they, they've heard the story of Saul. And so they weren't surprised about how things ended up with Saul. But when they heard about David and Bathsheba, my kids were shocked. <laughs> they, just, they said, he sinned? Yeah. What, what's going this on This is here? going down like a dart. Yeah, this is yeah. not. But, and so that's, it's just an opportunity for us as we look at these biblical characters to say, you know what? 
that's not the true king. That's mm-hmm. not the ultimate king. They're pointing us forward. He's pointing us forward to Jesus, the one who never sinned. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, really important point there.